Okay, third time's a charm. All right. All right. So, you know, a lot of people have been talking about anxiety lately. Um, and so I just thought it was good timing to come on and have a conversation together with everyone. Um, and what do you call, you know, what are you calling that for yourself? Is it anxiety? Uh, I actually had a few different conversations this morning with some other amazing people and uh, the topic or the word of the day has actually been fear. And so the opposite of that fear and anxiety is actually getting into peace and serenity. And the question really is, how do we do that? I think the first amazing thing that I took away today and over the past uh, is that, you know, we can all feel safe by sharing what's going on in our minds and in our hearts and how we're projecting that fear or that anxiety or that overwhelm. Um, we all can experience these types of feelings. That's what they are. They're feelings. And it's really how we interpret what's going on, which is your external environment. How we all interpret it, interpret that is completely up to us because the external environment goes through our mind, through our eyes and into our mind and into our heart and all of our sensories. And then our past experience, our childhood, uh, you know, what's been said to us, how we've been brought up, all of that helps us to create our own reality. And the neat thing about that is no two people process the same exact situation in the same way. And no two people feel the same way about a same situation. Um, and so, you know, when we can recognize that, uh, we can each individually think about where the interpretation, where the anxiety in this case may stem from. So, you know, what is anxiety? What is fear, stress, overwhelm? They're all a little bit different. So I don't want to pretend that they're not. Uh, but what we do know is that anxiety uh, in this case is real and it's in our mind. Our fears are in our mind. Our anxiety is in our mind. Uh, and so we can experience this both mentally and physically. And the physical part comes from our interpretation of what's going on. We all have different symptoms. Uh, we all behave in different ways when we're fearful or when we're full of anxiety. So it's real. It, it starts in our mind. And anxiety is actually defined as um, a, a thought or a projection out into the future about how something, about what is the outcome of something, about how something might turn out. And it may or may not be true, but that's the process that our minds go through and then how our behavior um, is dictated based on that. So one of the things that I uh, came across recently too was that in Chinese, there's two symbols that um, represent the word crisis. Perhaps you might be able to think or relate that to anxiety. And so the two symbols are actually one is danger and the first one is, and the second one is opportunity. And so that was really neat for me because whether it's danger or crisis or fear, or overwhelm or stress, you know, any those, the, that negative emotion first does present us with an opportunity, presents us with an opportunity of how we're going to solve that problem, how we're going to get out of that problem, how we can change our mindset around that. Who can we call on, um, you know, what tools do we need to process through that and get out of that? Because this is an emotional uh, experience that we're having. And our, when our emotional response, because at first it's, it's the mental interpretation goes into from our mind into our heart, and then is projected out into the physical. When our emotional response is out of proportion to the external situation or environment or person, uh, that may be unhealthy. That may not be uh, an ideal way to think, feel, or behave. 
Uh, but also know too that emotions are real and stress and fear and anxiety can all be real. And so when your emotions are in alignment with what's going on, like death, for instance, that's a real emotion. Uh, and if we think about, uh, you know, historically with our ancestors, um, when we can think about what fear looked like back then, it was to keep us safe and to keep us alive. And that's exactly what our body does. That's why we, you know, we think that, oh, I, I can't do one more push up, or I can't run any further or, um, you know, just keeping it on the physical. That's when our, our mind is designed to protect us. And so if we take that and ancestrally, um, you know, and bring that through to now, there is a lot of truth in that. And there's a lot of hope in that. Uh, it's just remember when our emotions are out of proportion to what's going on. And, you know, if you're dealing with especially chronic anxiety, that might, might, might not make sense for you. You might not be at a place where, you know, you're thinking it's out of proportion because that's your norm. And that's how you are interpreting and then responding and reacting to what is going on. What's cool is that our emotions in their pure state can just flow freely like energy, right? Uh, when you're happy, you can be happy for a moment and then you can be sad the next moment. It's, um, I've always said, you know, it's fascinating to watch children and, and I wish that I could go back there, which in fact, you know, growing through this, I know that we can, uh, they can be crying and bawling their eyes out one moment because of what's important to them and their toy got taken away. And then they're laughing and playing because somebody or something was funny. And so that is a perfect example of how, when we're younger and we don't have trauma, when we don't have past experiences, when we don't, uh, consciously, or unconsciously interpret things to be negative or stressful. That's just amazing how we can quickly change our responses, change our emotions and change how our energy flows. And so since our energy can naturally and does naturally flow because it is energy, uh, we can in an instant change that. We can make a conscious decision to change that. And that's really one of the things, one of the tools that can help us is uh, having an awareness of what's going on because we can make a choice to change how we think and how we behave really in any given moment. Now, you know, there's a series of events that have happened um, in our life that, again, that's our own life that have put us in a place where we're at. So uh, in regards to stress, anxiety, fear, overwhelm, et cetera, for these negative emotions and our emotions are like magnets. So if you have childhood memories, trauma, it doesn't have to be trauma. Uh, you can have had real, no real trauma, which trauma is an eye of the beholder. It's, it's your interpretation of that. And that's a beautiful thing uh, because we can move out of that. So um, when I say that your emotions are like magnets, that is meaning that uh, your past experiences are kind of like, I'm envisioning like that pendulum thing, you know, those silver balls that, that hang on that pendulum. And so you have one, one event that happens that you aren't able to address, maybe because you're simply not aware of the impact that it's had on your life. And then you have another event that's connected to that or emotionally connected with that and so on and so forth. And we build up those magnets or those balls. And um, when, let's say we move to the end, because now we're adults, and if we've never done the work to release those past events, those feelings, the fear, anxiety, sadness, guilt, all of those feelings, when one thing happens, they all go off. And so that's where the power comes in when it comes to anxiety or chronic anxiety or chronic fear and overwhelm. And so when we can go backwards on those magnets, uh, we can get to the root cause. We always know we hear about health and getting to the root cause of the problem, right? There's a lot of awareness around health and wellness these days. And 
and anxiety is, is mental and emotional health and being aware on that in, in regards to that. And if we get to the root of that, and if we can dig up that root out of the ground, because if you just keep and keep popping the head off of that flower, that weed, actually, if we keep popping the head off of that weed and we don't get to the root, it's going to keep sprouting up now therapies and, you know, talk and, and sometimes medication can, can help us manage the weeds but they're going to keep being there. And it's a really, really long process. So when we can find the root and go back into our childhood, sometimes even beyond or prior to our childhood, when we can dig that up, then we can release. Now we still learn how to deal with situations um, because we can't always change our environment. We can control where we put ourselves and place ourselves and who we surround ourselves with. But um, we'll be more equipped to handle that. And we won't have to relive those moments um, or those thoughts. We don't have to relive moments, but we relive thoughts. For me, um, it's my mind that is constantly, uh, what is the word? Like uh, premeditating. I'm always thinking out into the future. And that's in exactly what anxiety is, is thinking out into the future of something that's, that's unknown. You just don't know what's going to happen. And that's why you're fearful or you have anxiety into it. So when we, get in, when we can get into the mind, we can release whatever is in there that's holding us down, we can actually get into the healing phase and it can be quite rapid. Um, I've gone through therapy. I don't know if any of you on here have, and that takes time and it takes talking about the same thing over and over again. So there's definitely ways that we can remove the old charge and instill a new charge and install new thoughts and new behaviors. So uh, Cause you know, like we think about, again, when it comes to health and wellness, we think about our cell turnover, right? Like when our skin, um, when you're, um, um, exfoliating was the word I was looking for. You exfoliate your skin, you have a natural cell turnover, your gut lining replenishes itself every few days. Um, you know, your entire body is new. I think every seven years or so. And the same thing can be true with our mind. We can regenerate or generate new thoughts, new, new thought patterns and, and have new turnover. So what are some of the things that you can do when you're finding yourself, um, in the state of anxiety or fear, overwhelm. Uh, sometimes what's helpful is, um, you know, breaking state in regards to uh, your, your physical body and because that's connected to your mental and emotional body. And so uh, if you find yourself in a state, you can plant your feet on the ground, remain seated or standing. And you've all heard of breath work, I'm sure. So breathing in for the count of four, holding for the count of four and releasing for the count of four. When you can focus on something else, you can pull yourself away from that fear, that anxiety, that overwhelm that may or may not be real. It's definitely real for you in the moment, uh, but what you're thinking about may or may not be real. Um, some other lifestyle habits that we can change, which is part of the work as well, right? Because habits are what we do on a daily basis. And so when we can begin to make small changes in our lifestyle, we can create new, new wellness habits for us specifically around anxiety, fear, stress, overwhelm. Uh, so today I actually uh, got my Zen for this topic. I thought it was suiting um, for the topic of anxiety. So essential oils, if you're into them, fragrance is definitely, it's one of our senses. And so uh, fragrance can uh, bring up memories, uh, can calm us in this case, and um, doing some prayer and meditation, doing some deep breathing, sometimes reading, uh, supplements such as magnesium. Um, there are multiple forms of magnesium and they all have a slightly different form and then some of them work together, uh, but different forms of magnesium can help. And, you know, too, calling on, calling on God to help you. Uh, something that I've been listening to is uh, another speaker and she teaches people to just pause in the moment and say, uh, you know, something along the lines, and you can interpret this for yourself and create your own uh, prayer or um, your new mindset and dialogue in your mind and transform that into your heart. And just tell God that, you know, that he's given you exactly what you need for this moment. And uh, understand that what you're projecting may or may not happen and know that you can handle it. 
If you're tell yourself, because if you guys heard of that saying, if you think you can, you can, if you think you can't, you can't. So whatever you think is true. That is your reality. And that's hundred percent true. Um, and so when we realize that we know that again, going back to, uh, realizing that we can change our emotions, we can change our energy. We can interrupt that energy source and, uh, change it in an instant if you want to. And it takes practice. Not going to tell you it's going to be easy, but there's definitely practices that we can do to begin to release. Um, anxiety is really big right now, right? For a lot of people. So whether that's you or whether you're listening in and thinking of somebody else that, that may benefit from this video, or, you know, maybe you can have a talk with them and share your interpretation and just let them know you're there to support them. Um, you know, that's, that's a way that we can help people too. So if you're ready to dig into your childhood, if you're ready to dig into your mind and release that, we can do that. And my prayer for you is that you are at peace and you are able to navigate today. That's all, just today. Navigate today and end your day on a positive note in gratitude. Again, changing your mindset, changing your state, putting yourself in a positive uh, thought pattern and starting your day that way. Uh, try it. See what's helpful for you.